Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever opened with a send-off to T'Challa, but a funeral flanked by the heroes whom T'Challa always fought alongside, allowing them to draw Thanos into his kingdom and kill his countrymen before Thanos snapped an additional half of those survivors, allowing Captain America to keep Bucky on ice and supplying Bucky with a new vibranium arm, and being the freaking first out of a portal on Cap's left during the Battle of Earth and Avengers Endgame. So why did none of the Avengers attend T'Challa's funeral? Well, of course, the real reason is this is is a movie, and movies cost money, and unlike Tony Stark's funeral in Avengers Endgame, not every MCU hero is on the call sheet for Wakanda Forever. If they were to pay Ruffalo, and Hemsworth, and Mackie, Stan, Cumberbatch, Renner, and the rest to make a cameo, they'd have to, I don't know, light Talokan even less than they did. But this is the MCU, where every logical inconsistency has an in-universe explanation. No, scram, team much not now. But there may actually be a very valid reason why the Avengers did not attend T'Challa's funeral in Wakanda Forever, and I gotta tell you, this answer may bum you out even more. But it is worth considering that many of the Avengers aren't exactly around to attend something like this right now. Tony and Natasha, obviously dead. Steve is uh, on the moon, we don't really know. Thor is on another planet with Gore's daughter stopping beach fights. Bruce Banner is either on Sakaar, if Wakanda Forever is set during She-Hulk, or just dealing with the sun scar, and you know, that guy looks like a handful. The Guardians are off-world and didn't really have a ton of time with T'Challa. Doctor Strange is in the dark dimension. Wanda is either dead or in another realm. Peter Parker is is just a nobody in New York, probably without a passport. So that really just leaves Rhodey, Sam, Bucky, White Vision, Wong, Scott, Hope, and Clint, who fought alongside T'Challa in Endgame and past films and were no-shows at his funeral. I mean, I don't know, maybe Bucky is still reeling from his arm and didn't want to return to Wakanda empty-shouldered, admitting that he lost some valuable vibranium. But what's perhaps more curious is that someone like Everett Ross also failed to appear at the funeral, given that he does appear in this movie elsewhere, and he had a long-time friendship with the Wakandans from that 2018 film. A simple explanation could just be that Wakandan royal funerals are sacred ceremonial affairs in which only Wakandans are invited. And other friends and loved ones of T'Challa, like Nakia and Toussaint did, held separate memorial services outside of Wakanda. I mean, let's be honest, it was already a little weird to see Everett Ross and Bucky wearing Wakandan garb, and I don't think we needed to see them with Clint Barton and Scott Lang and like Hulk wearing white robes dancing alongside the others in the funeral march. This is supposed to be a somber affair. 2023 is just around the corner and I want to hit the ground running away from my loved ones who I may cherish memories with this holiday season. If you want to get away, you're going to need some money to fuel your flight, and there's no better way to save up for a little me time than by using Upside. Upside is a free app that lets you earn cash back on everyday purchases like gas, groceries, or dinner. It's easy to use, and it works. For me, Upside is essential for buying gas. When my tank's on empty, I open the Upside app, I search for a nearby gas station offering a good deal, I claim it, and then I head over there to buy some gas. I can check in or snap a pic of the receipt and I am good to go. No special cards to carry or numbers to remember, just Upside's app on my phone. Anytime I want, I can cash out to my bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Upside users are earning more than a million dollars every week and it has a 4.8 star rating on the App Store. To get started, download the free Upside app and use the code NEWROCKSTARS to get $5 or more cash back on your first purchase of $10 or more. But we should also take a step back to realize that funerals are truly Truly not for the deceased, they are for the mourners. So when we look at T'Challa's funeral and who was or wasn't there, it's less a statement of T'Challa and his relationships as a reflection of Ramonda and Shuri and their relationships. We don't know how Ramonda and Shuri felt about the Avengers, but it is noteworthy that Ramonda closes off Wakanda from the outside world in her appearance at the UN, a reversal of T'Challa's open-armed policy. Now, Ramonda is completely justified in doing this. The Americans and the French had begun attacking Wakandan outreach centers and designing detectors to plunder vibranium. And by the way, where were the Avengers? in those instances, huh? Why don't we ask that question? And the Avengers? They went home. What, Avengers, you muck up one mission in Nigeria and now when Molly gets hit, you're like, oh, I think the Wakandans have things covered. But it's also just valid for Ramona to change course from T'Challa's international outreach policy to a more defensive posture because, let's be real, what did open arms get Ramona? As she powerfully stated in this film, she was queen of the most powerful nation in the world and her entire family is gone. Had she not given everything? T'Challa died from an illness that is never identified in this film, but according to Shuri, it was something from which T'Challa suffered in silence without Shuri 
Mercury and others finding out about it until it was too late. The film, of course, avoids focusing too much on how T'Challa died to stay away from the perception that they might be exploiting Chadwick Boseman's death as a plot point or a fictionalized spectacle of any kind, and instead smartly keeps things focused on Shuri as an instrument of grief and how the living should best process losing a loved one. But by the line, suffered in silence, the implication certainly is that T'Challa might have had a somewhat concealable disease similar to the colon cancer that Boseman himself suffered from for several years. And if so, T'Challa would be one of many characters in the MCU who died from cancer in recent years. Jane Foster, Maria Rambeau, Meredith Quill. Jane Foster's cancer was implied to be an incidental bit of bad fortune. Maria Rambeau's cancer was left as a mystery. But Meredith Quill's cancer was a deliberate act of murder by Ego the Living Planet, who admitted to giving Meredith her brain tumor. And that moment in Guardians Volume 2 confirmed it. Celestials have at least the ability to manifest tumors in people's brains, perhaps through celestial light, aka cosmic radiation. So it's worth considering that in the MCU, exposure to cosmic radiation like this, like Jane Foster with the ether, Maria Rambeau through the Tesseract-derived cosmic radiation that Carol Danvers carries with her, and the exposure to Infinity Stones seen by people in the near vicinity of the Battle of Earth and the Battle of Wakanda may have just left some unlucky individuals with a form of cancer. Now either that, or just people like Ramona suspect that exposing her son to cosmic battles like Thanos' Power Stone wallop in the Battle of Wakanda, or Tony Stark I am Iron Man in the whole battlefield in Endgame might have been among the causes that left her otherwise seemingly healthy son with whatever his illness was. And yeah, it makes sense that she would harbor some resentment toward the Avengers, enough to deny them an invitation to T'Challa's funeral. Like, I don't know what happened, but my son was fine until he started getting mixed up with all of you. Look, folks, losing a loved one is complicated. There's no right way to grieve. And funerals don't always bring the living together in perfect harmony. Sometimes resentments come up between factions of the deceased survivors about how much of the deceased's life they occupied, whether they were good for them. This is coming from someone who has a big, complicated family. I can tell you, unfortunately, a lot of the family funerals I've been to have had a couple arguments break out. And if you are watching this video and you've lost people in your life and you've seen that like I have, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But if you're younger and you haven't gone through that, just know that for some families, when someone dies, it can be better for some loved ones if not all family and all friends stand in formation by like a lakeside and instead just pay respects in their own ways. So there you go, kind of a bummer answer. And hopefully if you came out of Wakanda Forever curious where the Avengers were, this video gave you a more sobering understanding of how funerals often play out in the real world. Sometimes it's just better to keep things as family events, and that alone can be the most meaningful tribute. Follow me on TikTok, Hive, Instagram, and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow the New Rockstars, subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.